This is what the tutorial is gonna be looking at. This is, oh God. A jigsaw puzzle is an image on a sheet of cardboard that is chopped up into weird but uniquely shaped pieces and then mixed around in a box so the person willing to spend at least a few hours of their time can put it back together. This can be done with your friends or on your own. This video will show you how I do a jigsaw puzzle. The size and number of pieces jigsaw puzzles can have vary, so I'm going to cover the 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle. Finding a space. In order to start a jigsaw puzzle, you must first find a dedicated space to do a jigsaw puzzle. This could be any flat hard surface like a table or the floor. Jigsaw puzzles can take some time to complete so it must be a space that won't be in the way of any important stuff or walkways. If you don't know if the space is big enough to fit the full puzzle, the dimensions of the full puzzle can be found on the box. Putting it together. Now that you have a space and hopefully a jigsaw puzzle, you need to put the puzzle together. This is the hardest part as it takes a very long time, but it's quite a simple process. Before you can start putting together the jigsaw puzzle, it's best that you flip all of the pieces that are facing down because doing a puzzle where the image isn't on the piece is extremely hard. If you think you can sort the pieces, do it. Try to get the edge pieces if you can and separate them from the other pieces. To put the puzzle together, what you do is get two pieces that look like they go together and then put them together. The hard part of this is finding the pieces that go together. A lot of people start with the edge pieces and I would recommend doing that because those pieces have the least amount of connection points. And it's also a secondary way of seeing if your puzzle fits in your space. But it's also very easy to tell where those pieces go, on the edge. You can use the box as a reference so you can tell where the individual pieces can go. Reminder that the reference is not on a one-to-one -one scale with the dimensions of the completed puzzle, so don't try to overlay the pieces over the box. Continuing and finishing. Depending on how much free time you have and how engaged you are, this could take between a few days to maybe longer than a fortnight to complete. Because it can take so long, you might lose the motivation to do it and you'll need a reason to do it. What I like to do is take a photo of the puzzle each day as I progress through it. If I don't do anything on a day, I don't take a photo. Remember that this is supposed to be fun. Don't try to make it hell for yourself. And don't pressure yourself to finish it as fast as you can. But if you have the time to do it and you got nothing else to do, there's an option. Here are some tips to be more efficient. When starting off, look at a few areas in the image that look like would have a bunch of similar pieces and work on those areas. You want to focus on what could be on each piece. The color, texture, perspective, and the amount of detail. If the texture has lines, Look at which direction they're going and that can help reduce the amount of combinations that you'll need to do and where the piece could go. If there are a lot of small lines and dots, the piece would probably go to a place where the image shows that amount of detail in a small space and far away from the camera in the case of this puzzle. If the texture and detail is really big, compared to the size of the piece, 
the piece would go to a place that would be really close to the camera. There are better terms to use for this explanation, but these are the words that I know. The only activity you do doesn't have to exclusively be completing the jigsaw puzzle. You can put on some music, do some exercise if you want, have something to eat or drink, hop on a call with someone and talk, and there are probably many other things you could do that I couldn't think of. I like to have the loose pieces not in the middle of the puzzle because it creates a lot of noise and it works as a space to make smaller constructions of areas in the puzzle. Some pieces have weird and exaggerated edges and sometimes that can help because those weird edges make the piece very distinct and you will instantly know where they will go once you see another piece with the opposite edge, obviously. When looking at the innies and outies of the placed pieces, you can use that knowledge to figure out what the shape of the piece is, generally, where the innies and outies are. So it could be like four outs or four ends, maybe split between two, whatever. You could bring some friends over to help you. That'll make it a lot faster. If you're stuck on some silly sky or gradient, you can try to sort the pieces to the extreme sides. It's like all the dark pieces is on one side and all the very white pieces is on the other side. Then you can just do trial and error. I find it super slow, but it works. In the pieces, you'll probably be able to spot a few that have two very different colors and textures on them. The ones that kind of separate between two different things. I would recommend prioritizing them. Depending what puzzle you're doing, sometimes the pieces can appear very rectangular and that can help you with figuring out the orientation of the pieces, especially with the case of the puzzle shown in today's video. Conclusion With this information, you should be able to put together a jigsaw puzzle. Now you can go do it if you want. Goodbye.